Hello everyone. Hey, I wanted to follow up on my video of my Soundstream radio on my Street Glide. I mentioned that I had painted my interfering and I had some questions about uh, did I do it myself or did I pay someone and I actually did it myself. I do have a history of painting cars and motorcycles, but um, for interferings I have done um, kind of the cheapest way to do it and then I've also um, uh, done it with the regular automotive paint gun and all the the higher end paints so um, I'm gonna basically describe to you the the cheapest way that I've done it uh, and I've done it very quickly so in front of me is um, interfering as you uh, know they come some bikes come with a uh, flat matted uh, interfering and others I think the street glide special for example comes with the the gloss black interfering so um, what I've done in the past is um, I've sanded the interfering with 400 wet or dry sandpaper. Got it uh, fairly smooth, um, nothing too radical in terms of getting, you know, fine, smooth finish. And then uh, here on the on the left, there's an adhesive promoter that I use, basically for um, fiberglass, plastic, vinyl. I usually um, will prep the surface with the adhesive promoter. You can buy this at a um, auto paint store. I don't think, you might be able to get it on Amazon, but I don't think you can get it at O'Reilly's or AutoZone, something like that. So again, sand it with 400, maybe 600 sandpaper. Um, clean it, uh, use a wax or grease cleaner to clean the surface and then use the adhesive promoter. And then from that, um, you let it uh, set up for 15-20 minutes and then you can use a sandable primer and the primer that I have here is a uh, sandable primer and I bought that one at O'Reilly's and so that's probably eight nine bucks worth so once you have it's uh, primered with sandable primer you'd want to let it set up and then I usually scuff the primer to get it fairly smooth with uh, like 600 sandpaper and then um, from that again make sure it's clean and then go right to the color uh, and the color in this case would be black gloss black so i've used a very cheap krylon paint i've used uh, a higher end uh, paint that you see there on the table um, and the vivid black is the big question because vivid, vivid black is is hard to, to find the two color match the harley paint and so um, because in this case I had a blue bike and painting the interfering black, there's no other black near it. So um, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, with vivid black, but uh, something like Krylon would be close enough. So again, recap, he's a promoter to start with, primer, and then your color. Uh, in this case, is it's black. And so I've used, again, uh, vivid black from custom cans and I've also used just Krylon black paint and then really the uh, what makes this whole thing come together is uh, I use this spray max clear uh, from um, Amazon and uh, part number is 3680061 and that um, is a 2k clear which means that uh, it has a hardener and so this this blue or excuse me this red cap on top you would remove that and you would you would uh, pardon me for a second you would um, install it on the bottom of the can and then you would puncture the uh, the hardener that's in the bottom of the can by pushing this in and once that's done you would shake it for a few minutes and mix the hardener with the clear and now you have really a professional grade uh, clear that you could use to finish the uh, interfering and so it goes on very well uh, it gets into the uh, speedometer housing area and uh, speaker housing area very nicely and it really uh, does a great job of providing great gloss and finishing up the the work that you've done on your interfering uh, I wouldn't be 
overly critical of any minor uh, issues that you may have from putting it on the clear. Let's say you get a um, piece of dust or, or something floating in the air that falls in it while it's drying. You can easily use like a 3000 grit sandpaper to smooth out areas that didn't come out perfectly and then uh, rub it out with rubbing compound that you can get from O'Reilly's AutoZone, something like that. But you wouldn't want to do that until the clear is is well set up, let's say a week or two later. But uh, yeah, it's a, a fairly inexpensive um, do-it-yourself project. So the adhesive promoter is about eight, nine bucks. Sandable primer is about eight, nine bucks. The paint, depending on which can you use, the Krylon is probably eight, nine bucks. I think the custom cans, the Vivid Black, I paid 20 bucks for. And then really where it all comes together is with that uh, 2K Clear that I mentioned, and that's about 20 bucks. So all in all, you can probably get by with, you know, 40, 50 bucks uh, painting your interfering, and, um, and it, it comes out really nice. <clears throat> All right, folks, so uh, what I have here, I, I got the higher end paint that I use for uh, bikes and cars, and I did buy this on Amazon. So uh, quite frankly, the gloss black there on the left is um, very close to the vivid black. In fact, uh, I, I've painted uh, bikes and cars and side by side uh, with vivid black and this paint, and it's, it's almost a perfect match. And so, uh, what I described a moment ago was really a cheap way to do it. Um, you could go with, again, the adhesive promoter, uh, sandable primer. Uh, you can use higher end primer or the stuff that I mentioned earlier about this gloss black. I think I paid like 80 bucks for the, um, the gloss black plus the hardener, the activator there on the right. And it works great, uh, goes on easy and um, yeah, it does a great job. And then here on uh, further to the right is the clear that I've used and the clear I've used on just about everything also from Amazon. And that's also in that 80 bucks range. So it's the clear plus the activator uh, right next to it. And so um, for those of you who, who have paint equipment, and this is a gun that I've used and so uh, I, I have several different types of guns, but for small jobs, uh, uh, that one works fine. And I said earlier that I don't get too critical on the finish. I mean, the, the clear that you put on, whether it's this one or the aerosol can that I showed earlier, um, both do a great job. And because they have a hardener, uh, they set up really well and become very hard after a week or two. And you could actually do some uh, localized sanding to get impurities, imperfections out of it. And um, yeah, using like 3000 grit sandpaper. And then what you see there in the backdrop, that super duty heavy cut compound, you can use that with a, a rag, uh, a microfiber towel and uh, polish the area that you've sanded to get any imperfections out of your, your uh, clear that you put on. But yeah, I just wanted to do a quick video, and I know some of, some folks have asked um, how I did it, and I've done it both ways, um, with uh, the cheaper version that I described a moment ago, and then using this paint and clear that you, you see here. I've done road glides, street glides, um, and any number of bikes. I've done side panels, I've done bags. Uh, so uh, um, yeah, I hope um, this is helpful for those of you who are doing it yourself. And I know maybe some professional painters out there might uh, be critical of what I've described, but hey, it works uh, in the cheapest way um, is, you know, for anyone looking at it, um, they really can't tell the difference, so. All right, folks, here's the uh, finished product of the work that I did on my interfering. So you can see it looks really nice. In fact, uh, it's probably not as clean as it could be. I got, I see some smudges there on the, uh, on the bottom but uh, yeah it came out nice uh, in fact uh, this one that I put on here um, replaced another one that was a factory gloss black um, 
interfering that I replaced and put this one on because uh, the one that I did I felt was much better than the factory Harley gloss interfering so it just goes to show that if you put some time and effort into it uh, you could make it look really nice and you know get it for uh, a fraction of the cost you would pay someone else to do it